Hello everybody, Corydon here with Don's Knowledge Book, and today we are going to be talking about Bree. In the Knowledge Book, I would like to try and cover everything I can about Bree, what she does, what enemies are good against her, what are her three builds that she can do, and what are all her events. You're going to see it later, and it's going to be a bit messy in the slides later, but I hope you'll forgive me as if I try to make everything perfect and look pretty like all straight lines. I would never get this done and it would just be an impossible project that would be sitting on the floor. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about Bree. Bree is a warrior. She gets the warrior cards. She's a tactical warrior who specializes in thorns. Out, out on there, she specializes in vitality, skills, and blunt damage as well. Blunt slash crack. She has 15 speed, some uh, decent physical resistances, a little bit of cold, a little bit of light resist. That 15 speed is... Usually probably 17 because of her forest banner starting item where she gains one fast at the combat start. It would be 19 speed if you pick up the fast perk, so do consider that over maybe even putting one more speed in. Just put the three points into fast so you get two speed or an extra speed at the start of combat. Her innate trait is spiky. Or at the start of combat she gains five thorns. And something to note about thorns is sharpness does not increase the damage thorns does in case you have that question about that. And then let's get on to your level 2s. She has a choice between defensive strategy, which the next three skills she draws, she draws one, and all heroes gain 15 block. And then she also gains 15 resistances as long as this card's up, so you can play two skills and not use the last draw, and she'll be a little bit more resistant, so keep that in mind. Unforgiving Nature is a combo card where for one turn, anytime she deals damage with a hit that isn't blocked or evaded, she's going to deal an extra blunt hit and also apply more crack. She also applies more crack charges and thorns charges while this is up as well. Her level 3 is a choice between countermeasures, which is thorn charges plus 1 and gain 3 thorns when damaged up to 3 times per round. And tactician, at the start of your turn, reduce the cost of skill cards in your hand until they are discarded. I would almost always pick tactician unless you're going for a pure thorns build. Because uh, getting thorns on you in Act 4 can actually get you killed, as I will show you in the uh, enemies to look out for section. So definitely almost always pick Tactician. It's going to be a great benefit. It works with your starting card, Standard Bearer. Which I will talk about in a little second, once I get over these skills. Her level 4s are Stampede, which is a pretty good damage card. Anytime she gets damage, she deals 10 damage to all monsters, applies 2 crack to them. And she also gives herself vitality and thorns, which is pretty dang good. But Command & Conquer is a hard choice. Even in the DPS build, I will consider it because it is just such an amazing card. She gets 7 block charges and the next 4 skills she plays, all heroes recover 6% HP. And with that, since it's recovering HP, it's not actually healing. So cards like Minotaur Horn or Golden Bell, which grants Bless on heal, is not going to trigger off of this. But all heroes will also gain Powerful and Vitality. This works with their Powerful and Vitality charges, so so consider putting one point into the Powerful and Vitality perks. And then all heroes also gain one Mighty Gate for each skill, so that can be busted too, because Mighty Gate's just such a good uh, effect. Then we have the choice between Queen of Thorns and Tireless. Tireless is something all fighters except Yogger have, where energy regeneration is plus one and you're immune to fatigue, so that's plus one energy per turn. I think these might get changed down the line. I'm not sure the devs intentions, but it seems like a lot of the fighters have the same level fives and they might want to change that up. And then we have Queen of Thorns, which is whenever you gain block charges instead of gaining block, you gain 30% of those charges as thorns. This means you will never have block again. Even if you have somebody shielding you, when the shield turns the block, it's just going to turn into thorns instead. So Keep in mind, it's gonna you're gonna have to build around keeping Bria alive without any block through high high resistances, vitality, and mighty gate, what have you. So consider that before you pick a Queen of Thorns. Her starting deck is pretty good. Pummels are great damage cards that hit front monster and deal some crack. Intercept is pretty good, especially when you have all the block perks. Spike Shield is a bit expensive for what it does. Invigorating Blow it cost one essentially since you're getting an energy back and it does a bit of damage so all right to keep those sometimes intimidates are great free skills that you'll probably want to pick up the mark and vulnerable perks for as it will increase everybody's damage quite a bit 
Battle Shout is powerful, reinforce, and vitality to everybody. Wolf Dispelling Slow, great card, one of the best. As that's plus 15% damage for everybody during their turn. And plus 20% if you have the perk. And then we have Standard Bearer, which is a great card itself because it gives everybody Inspire, meaning they'll draw an extra card that turn, some Thorns, and it does a little bit of healing. So, pretty good starting hand. And let's move on over to perks. Perks, let's go through those quick. Important perks to have is in the first 20, definitely get energy. Speed plus one. I'm going to highlight this fast over this speed plus one. Because of her starting item is the forest banner, getting this fast perk will give you actually one, one speed over this when uh, you start the combat. As long as you're not replacing that forest banner, this is going to be more speed for the first turn, and then anytime you apply fast, it's going to be better. So I prefer taking usually a fast over a, a speed, but in most cases you're probably going to want both. Uh, Mark's pretty good to pick up because you'll be doing a lot of intimidates. Another big one is this reinforced perk here because it'll t turn her pretty much into Magnus tank ability because it's pretty much Magnus's level one perk where the hero gains one fortify at the start of combat or one reinforce at the start of combat. Reinforce on this hero cannot be purged is great. Any of the vulnerable perks where charges you apply plus one is great. Uh, uh, Max charges is increased by one and then charges are reduced by one instead of two at the end of turn, which is great. And then this is great for physical teams where it only reduces slashing, piercing, and blunt resistances. You also get this fortified perk down here where the hero can gain one fortify on the first turn. And fortify on this hero cannot be purged unless specify, which is really good for tanking. Then there's also reinforced perks like charges. Reinforced on heroes increases blunt slashing perks by 35% instead of 30, which is also good. And reinforce on this hero can stack increases slashing, piercing, blunt resistance by 7% per charge. That goes up to, I think, 48%? Not sure. Alright. I did a mass. Uh, you guys tricked me and lambast me in the comments. And then interestingly enough, her thorn perks are pretty different. Thorns do not on heroes do not lose charges when hit is pretty good. Thorns on this hero instead do holy damage, which is pretty good for the first act, but falls off in later acts when monsters become more holy resistant, but it is a good way to kill Yolmer and other Trunkies as they are negative holy resistance in most cases. And then an interesting one is Thorns on this hero apply 50% of its charges as poison to the attacker instead of doing damage, and this one can be put on every hero, so you can stack a ton of poison when enemies use AoEs by putting this on all four heroes. Elemental, I would always, always pick up the powerful if you're going Command and Conquer, because that just doubles the effectiveness of that. And powerful is a little bit harder to find nowadays, so definitely pick that one up. And then I always pick up this Vitality. There's some other things you can pick up, like Vitality increases HP, Vitality increases Mind Resistance and does not lose charges, and Vitality removes Bleed if you're going for a Fury build, but I wouldn't recommend that since that's usually a Grookly thing. If you're going DPS Bree, you will probably want the Bless deals 1.5x damage per charge. It is pretty crazy. And yeah, that's about it. One other one to highlight is this Ice Perk that reduces uh, Blunt Resistance by 0.3% per charge, but we'll get into that as we get into the builds. And now for let's do something new. So I'm going to put us in combat, get us some music. And then clear myself and the game out of the way. And here is the big thing. All right. Here we go. First of all, we are starting with Bree support tank build. Who does she work with with allies? She is good with everybody in this build. She works in any team comp. She does great. On level up side, you'll want to take Defensive Strategy, Tactician, Command and Conquer, and Tireless. I just have Defensive Strategy and Command and Conquer there to show that. I already talked about the speed perk over here, over this speed. This way, I also usually 
It's also good to put slow on her as well if she's using piercing howls to do the uh invulnerable or vulnerable debuffs for the team, like right over here. Uh that I had paintbrush. Like uh she's doing vulnerable debuffs. Definitely uh think about getting the that slow for future use. And then I have this uh fortify perk selected where the hero gains one fortify on their first turn. And then the second page of this is going to be what cards to get. For a starting deck, you can get a little bit of an M16 one with the 675 tank there. I have the blue helping hand as right here, where that will dispel uh, it'll dispel shackle along with uh, getting rid of slow. So it's pretty dang good for act one. It, when you're fighting on higher difficulties because the shackles last two turns and you'll be getting them from Yulmer and the trees. We got Piercing Hell Yellow, we craft another Intimidate, we take out the Spike Shields. And I also added a Shake It Off in there to get rid of some debuffs if your priest isn't dispelling as much as you wanted them to. And then a Repair Armor, of course, because Repair Armor is great. Uh, nothing really much in Cheap Bree. I do add the Stockade there because it's a pretty good card for Act 1. I want to consider it for acts beyond that and then if you're playing with just, just a lot of shards and all the unlocks this group defense with the piercing howls and barricades and entrench to keep your team up is amazing another thing to consider with this deck here is instead of the repair armor or shake it off you can put it in a blue sunder armor and get you some uh big vulnerable stacks on whatever target you want Good finds to put in the deck. I have Battle Plan. Citadel is amazing. This card cannot be understated about how amazing it is. This 5 Mighty Gate is huge. Like, it just neuters enemy attacks. It's so good. And Trench is always good. Last Stand is really good, especially if you have, like, Battle Plan to put cards on top. So you can put your Entrenches back on top and then get them for discounted or free with the the upgrade. Push forward is always good, especially if you pick that fast perk because you are speeding your team up as well as speeding yourself up. Second Wind is also a great pickup. Dispel all, gain a lot of healing, and you'll also be getting your mana back that you spent on that the next turn. And if you have the level 3 where skills cost less, this is going to be a net gain of 1 mana. Immortalizing Shout is pretty amazing. It's underrated and I had to be reminded that it'd probably go into this deck. So 50% less damage from all monsters is pretty dang good and it also applies vulnerable based on your vulnerable stacks. Throw bolas I like picking up it's actually a skill so it'll be discounted if it's in your drawn hand and shackling an enemy that you want your DPS to hit before they get a turn is very very good or if you want to stop a buff Buffer from buffing until the end of turn. Very good. Titanfall is just a lot of damage. Some vulnerable. It burns. And this section over here called Final Five. I'm gonna, I have it for all three builds I'm going over today. It's the Final Five cards in your deck. When you're building a deck, you want it to have it where everything but five cards burn. In the most optimal situation. So you're drawing the same hand over and over and over. And with this, it can be a combination of these cards. It doesn't have to be these exact five. Like you can have two Entrench, one Battle Shout, two Helping Hands, etc. So keep that in mind. And this is just for playing optimally. You don't need to cut down to these five every time. Like I like running bigger decks too. I don't really care if I don't have the final five or just whatever. But yeah, Yellow Helping Hand to dispel Insanity and also grant Inspire to teammates. Battle Shout for the Powerful, and Reinforce and a little bit of Vitality. Entrench and Push Forward for the Blocks. And then we also have Seed Breaker, Sunder Armor for Vulnerability, and you can also go with Carnage as well for the uh, Vulnerable on the last boss. Let's go over Tank Items. This is a big page. Lots of information. Information overload almost. Weapons. Dream Sphere, Flail... And Destiny, I'd say anything that lets you draw cards or give you discount on any cards is really good. I didn't include all the draw cards, so 
anytime you see a draw card on a weapon is something to consider. Uh, one thing I can, one thing that's new in the latest patch is the Cold Wound Goblet, which is every time you play Reinforce, which is a lot of breeze attacks. You can be doing cold damage and applying cold to a random monster, so it's pretty neat. You can make some really interesting builds with that. You get that by going into the left side of the sewers where Zek is. And then going up to this node right here and going to the cup shop and buying the cups. The Iron Kenobo is also really good. It's in the fire zone. You leave the town and you go up here to the goblin caves. And then you fight the goblin boss and he'll drop that. It's great for the vulnerable charges and the crack charges if you're doing that or helping out with that. And then one thing I really like about Bree that I know a lot of people don't know or don't use is the fountain pen. And Battle Plan counts as a book, so whenever you're playing books like Battle Plan, you're giving all heroes plus one draw, which is quite amazing. But yeah, those are the uh, weapons you'll probably take into endgame as a tank support. Armor, anything that gives HP and resistances is good. Heavy Belt, especially if you don't have the Reinforce perk, is amazing. Pyromancer Robe, which is from the shop in the fire zone, I really like because it starts you off with... And insulate so if you're not getting insulate from anywhere it's uh really good for that zone especially the first two turns of like ignido or the cultist boss anything that makes you immune to slow is good or resistance is amazing retaliator is really good you transfer three curses off yourself to the enemy gain mighty gate amazing even though you're losing speed that mighty gate is probably worth it bastion is especially worth it for the mighty gate and fortify charges and then Shalok Hat, of course, is just amazing on anybody, where all heroes gain 2 Inspire, 2 Vitality, and 2 Powerful every turn. Jewelry. I love anything that gives you extra energy at the start of combat, and I think that goes good on anybody. And one thing with the Forest Crown is this comes from the Dryad Boss, and it also comes from Yulmer sometimes. And what's neat about Bree is she can just talk to the Dryad Boss, and the Dryad Boss will give this to her every time. So... If you pick this up, you're able to replace your accessory, which I think is a little more important of a slot than your uh, jewelry slot. So definitely consider getting the forest crown on your runs. Hard amulet is nice. Uh, Vitality charges is amazing on Bree. Hunting ring is pretty nice for the intimidates if you're running a lot of intimidates. We got your tank cards with the block charges, fortify charges, and then reinforce and block charges. And then end game we have Mountain King and Kingmaker. Mountain King reduce whenever you play a defense card, reduce the highest cost card in your hand by two. Until discarded and Kingmaker is just whenever you heal, you gain Bless and Buffer. Accessories, we have the Proficient, where anytime you play a skill, draw one. Keep in mind you when you're replacing your accessory, you're gonna be losing that fast at the start of battle, which is one or two fast depending on your uh perk setup. Anything that decreases the cost of skills or anything in your hand by any amount is good. Endless Beg is good if you're playing a lot of helping hands and intimidates that cost zero, as you'll be able to draw three more cards. Art of Thorns is pretty neat because every vitality charge you apply thorns. Strong Mojo is pretty neat for the dispel and some powerful. And Scroll of Resurrection is I want to really take this over any ex other accessory, but I do take it in Novelist mode when I'm just trying to get by. And on Higher Madness, the Scrolls of Resurrection will take the place of any piggy bank or royal coins that you find. So it's a bit more common than you think, especially from corrupted shops. Simulant Pills is also really good, especially with something like Push Forward. Warrior Code, code, code is probably the, the big cheese here with the uh, max HP plus 10, the block charges, but the big cheese is the vulnerable charges. Pets. Sharpie is really good for the Dispel one, especially if you get her corrupted, because this, when Blessing changes to all heroes, Dispel one gain fast. And you could almost replace your uh, fast banner later with, with just Sharpie. You'll be slower on the first turn, but everybody else will be getting fast every turn. Slimy is really good because you can apply Vulnerable when he's corrupted, and also a little bit of Poison to take away Buffer. Tempe, if you're going for more block into thorns. And then I have Wolfie here because his corrupted is flies vulnerable, hits everybody, slows, but just the regular one is pretty good for the slow and vulnerable every turn, especially if you have uh, vulnerable charges. 
All right. All right, Bleary the Blunt Villain. Let's get into this. She can go with her levels. She can go Unforgiving Nature. Is a must-have. Tactician. I would put at a... Probably better than Countermeasures, because you don't want the Thorns. Uh, discounts on skills, probably better. And then, Command & Conquer is so good, I would actually consider it over Stampede. So, I put them both here. Stampede, it does have a damage shield, but you're going to have to be getting hit for it to activate. While Command & Conquer is going to be giving you Powerful, which is not an easy source to get. So, And it's also going to keep the team alive, which is just kind of amazing in its own right. For perks, you can consider the Fury perk, and I'll just go with Fury Charges if you're going that way, but you don't need to in a Blunt build, that's just if you want to get some Fury. Uh, thorns, you can grab one, but it's not really needed. You want the Blunt perks, you'll want the Vulnerable. And then I prefer just to apply more charges because she's going to be she's gonna be applying a lot of charges. You can also consider Ice as well. Now for who she works well with in a Blunt build. She is going to be good friends with Zekker Evelyn as they do ice magic stuff. Elemental proliferation is going to put a lot of ice stacks. Death's Embrace is going to put a lot of ice stacks through dark application. And they're going to want to use Shatter, uh, any version of it, where they're going to be applying crack based on the amount of ice the enemy has. It's pretty great. And they can also get this perk where chill on enemies also reduces blunt resistance by 0.3 per charge. So you're going to be doing a lot more damage that way. For her other best friend, I actually, this is any DPS's best friend, Reginald, or not Reginald, Andrin. Andrin makes all the DPS smiles. Because with Trace and Expert Tracker, he is going to be getting your combo pieces out, and you'll want the most efficient combo with the best energy. Like, you can play every card, you can do everything in the same turn, you don't have to build it up or just hope for RNG. Andrin is going to have you set, and he's also going to be able to speed up others to buff you before you go. With Chance of Initiative, he can also slow down the enemy, he can also speed up all allies, so yeah, he is a damage is best friend. He's also going to be applying a lot of Mark, which is also going to amplify your damage quite a bit. And then I would also put any other warrior is a good fit for her, Heiner especially. Because, of course, you can play Bludgeons, you can play Pummels, you can play Siegebreaker and work off of each other. Or you can double the targets. Crack. But there's also this perk you can take where Fire Lupi on this hero can stack and increases Blunt damage, blunt and Fire damage by 1 per charge. Which is going to make uh, Steel Forge pretty amazing. Because if Steel Forge goes off and every single charge goes off through Steel Forge, that is going to be 6... Yeah, 16 stacks of Fortify, which is going to be plus 16 blunt damage, which is nothing to sneeze at. And then he can also just play the single target guards and then and, and group entrenches to get that damage higher. Let's go to the decks. These decks are going to be expensive. You don't really change much to the deck in Madness 16 or Higher Madness. But if you wanted to do a Fury build, I have one on the left. And if you just wanted to do a Crack Stacking build, I have one on the right. I think Change Weapon is one of the best cards that you can get. I'm going to actually bring that up quick because I thought I would have had it there. So let me bring that up. Knowledge book. Just to explain what this card does. I think this actually goes in skill pretty well too. Just because it lets you get through your deck so, so fast. Because you reveal two main latex from a draw pile and put them in your hand and you discard one. So you're actually drawing two and the discard is kind of not noticeable in most cases. But yeah, it's just a really good way of thinning out the deck. I love this card. And then uh, we have uh, good finds. I'm... Yeah, bludgeon is also really good to take just because it's a repeat two. Don't take too many of them though. And it applies a lot of crack, and Rage is amazing because it's more energy. Pummel is something good to play after the enemy has a lot of crack. It does a good amount of damage. You can upgrade it to repeat 4 or repeat 3 on any monster. Pretty good. Pulverize is also pretty good because it uh, does deal 
damage based on the enemy's crack. Repetition training is almost always good to take because it's going to give you permanent discounts to your melee attacks and even one of the upgrades lets you put it right into your hand. But the free upgrade, I wouldn't use it that much because it puts it in your hand, although it doesn't reduce the cost. So it's kind of eh. Siege Breaker is great for doubling target's crack. Throw bullets, I just love having the option to deal with somebody that has evasion and making things go last. Battle plan, of course. Really good card, especially if you have the skill discounts. War paint's pretty good as it's a draw and powerful, and it's a free draw if you draw it in your starting hand or the uh, draw at level 3. And then bluff is always good. Especially if you combo repetition training with bluff, it makes it a really good fun card. As you'll be having a free bluff that is uh, draw, deal damage, and apply crack. As for the final five, any combination of these is good. I'd probably prefer bludgeon and pummel in there. Siege Breaker is good for getting the stacks doubled once you apply a lot. Pummel is just good in general, but you'll probably want to take those out as you get these uh, bludgeons and pummels and siege breakers and bluffs. Like you'd probably replace pummel with bluff if you had the choice. And then pulverize is always good. All right, let's go over the weapons. These are all the weapons that apply crack charges. So consider them. Anything that draws melee attacks is also really good, like the flail. Iron Conobo, we already talked about that. You get that from the fire zone. You just go up to there and fight the Goblin Chiefs in there. Icebreaker is one of the most amazing weapons in the game. I think you can even uh, one turn the Archon with this weapon with the right combo on uh, the highest madness. I believe I've heard it been done, but you can correct me on that one. Anytime you apply crack, you're also dealing more damage and applying cold, and you also get plus two crack charges, which is a crazy amount. You also have the Obsidian Staff, but good luck getting it, because uh, when you go to the node, you're going to have to roll greater than a 6 to get that craft, and you're going to be usually running a lot of zero-cost cards in optimal decks, so it's going to be a hard craft, even though that 3 crack charges is amazing. And then you have the Stone Mall if you decide to loot the Crocodile Village, which is just a little bit off the first the town of the Velcro, or not Velcroth, but the Green Zone. And then we also have uh, Bronze Gear from the Black Forge boss. Adds uh, Crack Charges. Mana Loop I think is really good. Because you're going to be playing a lot of low cost cards that draw like Bluff, and especially if you're using uh, Repetition Training, you can get a lot out of it. And then Power Coil, of course, because who doesn't want more powerful? Accessories. Tackles War grants more. Crack Charges. Warriors Codex. Grinch you that vulnerable, and then Handbook and Proficient work off the of skills by reducing the cost of skills in your hand, and drawing skills and the upgraded handbooks are also really good too. Pet, I would consider Oculi just because his uh, Sight and Madness is really good for dispelling buffer. There isn't really a crack build focused pet. And then you have Wolfie slash Corrupted Wolfie for the slow and vulnerable, and then Corrupted Slimy for the vulnerable and poison. Alright, let's move on to the Thorns build. Alright. Thorns build, you're going to go defensive strategy, countermeasures, stampede or command and conquer, that one's going to be another choice up to you. Stampede's fun because it gets you thorn stacks, but command and conquer is just so good because it keeps everybody alive and gives everybody powerful. Queen of Thorns definitely because you're going thorns. Uh, perks. This is going to change a lot depending on what perk you put in uh, this one. So I've actually labeled all the, the perks like right here and here. So we'll go down there and talk about that and then you'll want a lot of defensive perks for going in Thorns. The first group mate she can have with uh, this I would put in Poison Builds where Poison on enemies reduce shadow damage which makes them which makes Zek and Maluka really good. And then Thorns on this hero applies 50% of his charges as poison to the attacker, which can st stack up a ton of poison really fast, even in the early game. 
So consider that when you're doing a Thorns build, and that means everybody's going to have this perk where uh, it's going to do Thorns. Let me draw a little Thorns there. <laughs> and then uh, things to work off of that is Bioglass, Noxious Eruption for the Scout or the Mage and Priest, respectively. Then we have Zek with or, uh, Duels, working off of Neurotoxin and Bane. Neurotoxin is a skill, so keep in mind when you get Duels level 5, where skills do not break stealth, you can be spamming Neurotoxin for, like, plus 200% damage from 10 stealth stacks and not breaking your stealth. And the Black Talons is just there because it also does a lot of poison, a lot of shadow damage, which is going to be lowered by the poison. And we also got, if you want to use uh, the Holy Thorns build, you will want somebody to apply Sanctify, and that is mostly Reginald and Otis through their unique cards and uh, whatever Sanctify cards they get as priests. And then if you're just running with regular Thorns and you want them to do more damage, you're going to want Sylvie and Nezlek to apply Sight. And I'd, I'd have to pair them together because Nezlek is applying the Sight. And only when Sylvie's on the team, you get Sight reduces enemies' piercing resistance by 0.3% per charge. So, consider those two in a Thorns build with Bree. And then, as always, we're going to put Yogger here because he has the Gourmet Meat, which increases your Thorns charges by 25%. So, that can get out of hand really quickly. Uh, Dex, I have no idea what you're going to be making it with Thorns in Madness 16. Because you can only make one barbed wire... And your other choices, I'm pretty sure, are like Spiked Shield, like one of them. So it's not great. It's not a great time. I made a cheap deck that includes Stockade. A Thorns Speed deck where I just uh, want to apply as many Thorns as possible and kind of cheaply to get through runs. And then a full Thorns deck where it's going to craft as many Thorns cards as I can. Good finds are Battle Plan, of course, even if you aren't getting the uh, skill discount. I think it's great to put things like Garden of Thorns back on top of your deck until you get more Thorns. Garden of Thorns is also great because it doubles your Thorns or you can split your Thorns. I think doubling is always more fun. The Corrupted version doubles Thorns on every hero, which is kind of nuts. Stockade, you're going to Thorns build, you're going to want more Thorns. Thousand Needles, you can change it to the yellow version to get more Thorns. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's always going to be more Thorns than the other version, even if you get the Queen of Thorns pick up. And then you have Torment of Thorns. The upgrades to this will also burn, but apply bleed based on your Thorns, which can be kind of crazy. I'm surprised I didn't actually <laughs> include that one. I'm actually going to bring that up. i just grab that quick. Just because uh, it's a neat thing that should have probably been on there in the first place. Oh, spoiled something. Done spoilers. But yeah, dealing bleed bait. No, that's not the bleed one. How dare. Don, what are you doing? All right, bleed, 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 This one. And then if you get the corrupted version as well, I'm going to snip that because it's just awesome to look at. We'll just put that right over there. Apply. Don't spin it. Bigger. You'll be applying point or er, bleed based on your uh, thorns plus 1.5, which is going to be coming handy for an item I'm about to show later. And then for the final five, I don't know. There's not much reusable cards you can have there. You'd just be probably spamming Torment of Thorns. And since Torment of Thorns is a ranged attack, you are also going to be uh, not having a great time using stuff like change weapons or repetition training. Thorns equipment isn't that great. We have the Porcupine, where you gain one Thorns every turn and cast card Cool Rain, which does damage based on your Thorns. That's kind of nice. For the Dark slash Poison Thorns, I've included Poison Dagger and Vitam Fang. And for the Holy Thorns build, I've included a Holy Hammer, as it can be nice to apply more Sanctify to lower resistances. Armor, you get from Yulmer the Shield of Thorns, which is going to be nice. You want to move into the shoulder pads and spike shoulder pads later on. 
Although the shoulder plate is going to be bad unless you corrupt it, as I have here. And then jewelry, we have the thorny ring and amulet of thorns that comes from anywhere. I've also put in the fervent ring and virulent ring, just in case you wanted to go with the bleed route on the torment of thorns. Accessories, really only the heart of thorns applies to thorn builds. Or you could do the Butcher Block, which increases aura charges by 25% if you draw the premium meat into your deck. And then Pent, of course, Chumpy's gonna be, Champy's going to be the only champ in there. But yeah, that is all three builds that I have for you. Let's move on to dangerous enemies that you're going to want to look out for. So Breeze Natural Predators in the Act 1 plus Red Zone are going to be this Shaman here because he can Purge too, which is kind of nasty. Don't like it. Yeah. But he usually does this on uh, turn two or three. So. And then we have Ravagers and Crucibles. They both cast Shield Smelter, which will purge your block on lower axe and lower madness. And they'll do purge block and purge fortify on higher madness. And purge block is bad because Breed doesn't have Wolf Guard to cover those situations. We also have the Orc Chieftain with Shield Breaker. And then the Pyromancer and the Pyromancer boss with Purging Flame is super annoying. Next act are going to be green blue zones. That These are the enemies you're going to want to look out for. Siren, of course, for the uh, Bewilder. Slime for the Purging Block is also going to be annoying. You're going to want to like do a lot of speed control or bolas to make sure your block gets used before these guys purge it. Swamp Horrors and the Scorn boss of the Hydras are going to cast Thorns Eater, which will purge your thorns and heal them, so careful on stacking thorns when these guys are on the field and the last one is alive, as you might be healing it <laughs> quite a bit and making the fight last longer. Then Scorn also casts Bewilder. I don't think it's actually called Bewilder, but it's a pretty much the same thing. Rodgar and his elite counterpart, I think Phil, have Flay, which is going to purge your block, so be careful of that. And these Draconoids are big, big problems on Thorns builds as they will steal your auras, and that can be a lot of Thorns. It's two on lower difficulties and earlier acts, but on higher difficulties, it's going to be three auras. And then Feyborg, he is going to cast this on turn two always. Write that down. So this is the only time you have to worry about it, so don't thorns up or do that many good buffs until after turn 2 passes or you know you're going to be putting your auras on later as he will steal them. But after turn 2 passes, you're going to go on buffing as much as you want. And then Act 4 Scary Dudes, the Deer Hunter Legends, the Lancers. It's funny because it looks like they were made to counter Bree, but Bree never existed when these guys were put in the game, so they kind of just counter her builds before she even existed. Mostly because Heart of Thorns was like a really good item, so they wanted something to counter Heart of Thorns, and they did it with this. So these guys are going to cast Oppression and deal damage based on what element they are. The light ones will deal light, dark ones will deal dark. They deal damage based on your target thorns and ignore block, which can be a lot to Bree, like 50 to 100 damage. It's kind of crazy and kind of why I don't like taking countermeasures is just this oppression right here. It's so good against her. They're also going to be trying to drain your vitality, which is purging vitality and they gain it. And then what they do with that vitality is put it back on you <laughs> and Put it back on you by applying dark and poison and doing a ton of damage so definitely be wary of these guys enemy number one kill them fast bad like very bad get them and then next section i have more we're gonna go over every single event brie has in the game so starting here with the left when the house is burning and you complete the event where you kill the imp or make it rain on the imp to scare it away and kill the cornies, you're going to have a defense check just to keep the house open for the three treasures. And at the baker's son here, she is going to 
give you an option to accept the quest but take no gold and the farmer will be like oh wow thanks and give you six items instead and then when you take this quest the uh, treants will be right down here at this node and she can automatically tell the treants to go away and she saves the kid automatically getting you the trustworthy thing at this event here with the werewolves in the clearing she can just shout at them and they'll run away so that's pretty good at the stall, she can just shout at the stall guy, run up, and that stall guy runs away, leaving his items. Down here, she can talk to the Dryad Queen, and the Dryad Queen will just skip the fight. You'll get the Moonstone, and you'll get all the treasures that you would have gotten from fighting the Dryad Queen. So that's pretty nice. If you go into the Bandit Camp with Yogger, you can get the Fresh Meat card, which is just Yogger's starting card. And then if you go into the camp without Yogger, her option will, when you fight him, to prepare. You'll get six block and four thorns. And then uh, at the boss too, you'll get an option to do a skill check. And it removes both ads from the fight if you succeed that. Alright, Bree in red zone. She has one singular option here. And that is down here at the crane. Where she'll be able to, on the common crane event, she'll be able to lift that crane up by herself and not have to do a roll for it. In the ice zone, she has... One event, and then one boss interaction. At the event up here, where she goes back to her glade. She is going to give you uh, shards, and that's about it. A little bit of experience as well. If you come up here with... If you haven't hired her yet, and you come up with here with Sylvie, Sylvie's gives you some lore. I think Andrin also gives lore with her, and then Magnus... I think it's Magnus, Andrin, and Sylvie both have... Inter or all three have interactions with her, if you wanted to know that. And then for the Greynor boss fight, if you select her option, you're going to get 6 armor and 7 block. I'd say it's probably not that great compared to what the others offer, because I'm pretty sure they can offer insulate and stuff like that. And bless. Or smokescreen. And then for the green zone, we have a few events. She doesn't do anything at the entrance of the cave, but if you make the jump in to get to the top path, she can clear the path to the spider cave automatically, so you don't have to roll for it. She also has this event down here where the rope is, where you could use the rope to cross without a skill check, but Bree also crosses without a skill check, so she can do that. And if you take her to Grookley's cave with Grookley in the party, Grookley gives her a powerful fury as a card. So if you're playing a fury build, concerned is that with uh, Grookley in the party. And here we go with some quick audio of Whiplash as we transition into how to draft Bree for Obelisk mode. This is going to be a short little bit, but... I think it'll help out in the end. Now the things I look for for Bree in Obelisk mode are skills, things that uh, slow the enemy, things that speed up the crew group, such as push forward, and things that uh, sometimes do blunt damage if I'm working on her blunt. So Steel Skin is pretty good for frontline, Shield Charge is as well since it slows an enemy, and then we got Repair Armor. The main two packs we want to look for are highlighted right here with Commander and Warlord. Because Warlord gets us stockade, Commander gets us push forward or uh, throw bolas. The other card you can get from Warlord is uh, Ground Slam. And then Random is always a good choice just to look at. So we're going to reroll all those, even though that Guardian would have been nice. Uh, that Commander is pretty nice with the Bluff, Helping Hand, Piercing Hell. Uh, Last Stand could be interesting. If we don't have any big uh, heal or armor things. So, yeah, let's go Defender and then Last Stand to get that in Trench. And, uh, whew. certainly some picks here. Shield Wall would be quite amazing since we have uh, Last Stand, but that Throw Bowl is, is also really good for Obelisk. So, I think since we have an Entrench and Spike Shield and Barricade, that'll be enough defenses, so we'd want to go throw bolas. As for perks, when you're picking perks for Bree, you always usually want to go to the, the fast perk if you're picking between fast and speed, because her starting item gives you uh, fast at the start of combat, so you'll be getting one additional speed and then just picking speed by itself. But you can always pick both of them. Flow is a good option as well, because she'll be using Piercing Hell and sometimes uh, Shield Charges. But I don't have any, but mostly it's for piercing hell. So, uh, yeah, don't really pick slow, but the other ones you really want to pick are Vitality, 
just because it works so well with Command and Conquer, as does Powerful. And then your last one can be uh, whatever choice you want. If you want more HP, resist, speed, or Vulnerable is also a good choice since she's usually applying Vulnerable. Or if you have a lot of Thorns card, Thorns is a good pick. But I'd almost always pick these three when uh, playing Bree. Powerful you don't really need if people are uh, able to provide their own Powerful. So you can just like swap it around like that. Or that. Or that. Well, let's do one more draft quick. Alright. We get some interesting uh, picks here. Barricade Corrupted is not that much better than the than like a yellow barricade. So I want to touch that. Compared to what we can get. I think we pass and we look for Battle Shout. Right there's one. And when it comes with Piercing Hell. Invigorating Blow is kind of nice since it heals us 15 damage. 20 damage if we have uh, points in the Vitality perk, which we most likely will. And then for the last option, I'm probably going to go Guardian, because that guard's pretty nice. Repair armor is always nice, and shield charge. And then uh, Purple Throw Bolas again. <laughs> Obvious choice. And then with this setup, we have one Piercing Howl, so we don't really need it. We always pick fast. I definitely pick the Vitality. I'm going to pick Powerful, because we have Battle Shout. And I might even pick Reinforce too, because that gives us an extra turn of 30% physical resist on everybody. So, yeah, that would be my setup for this draft. But I hope you all enjoyed. On to the next part. Zoom. And then for the final bit. Uh, if you actually want to see gameplay of the characters at high level. Good full runs on YouTube. Well, mostly full runs. Uh, we got Decker Tech with his brief support card if you want to learn about the support. And JJ or JJ A Kim, sixty six also did a full run with uh, Gustav as a DPS and Bree tanking, titled "My Wife Is Better at This Game Than I Am," and that's on Madness Eight. And then if you're looking for Bree damage, which is a uh, Bree bludgeon and bonk damage, search up JJ HM sixty six and his Bree Big Bonks M sixteen. And thank you for watching all this. Hopefully I edit out the uh, little pause I had there at the uh, blunt section, but I hope you also really enjoyed this free guide and <laughs> put a lot of work into it. So maybe I will do uh, more for the other characters, but uh, I just wanted to get everything done on Bree. That was pretty much it. But yeah, goodbye. Have a great day. Brush your teeth. Do all the fun stuff. Take care of yourselves. Peace.